Welcome to Grinzel's Goons. Hope you're ready to go down to that dungeon and start unlocking some prison cells. As far as opening hand goes, yeah, it doesn't look too good. Let's go and mulligan on that one. We have Minion Reflector, uh, Mountain Gamble. I guess we can gamble for Black Source if we want to do that. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Let's go one more go. That's really clunky. Yeah, I like this. We've got four lands. I'll keep on this one. The Phyrexian Tower. I'm just going to put that on the bottom for right now. And then our opponent's on the place, so we're going to go and let them do their thing. Uh, we're playing Grinzo. Grinzo's Goons, the official dungeon warden of all these crazy people we've got in here. You can see we've got Harold in the hands. He's a... Uh, He's always really nice. Uh, let's go and get out of the, the refuge. We're going to gain that life. Go to 31. Then we're going to go and pass it to our opponent. So we're playing Grinzo. Whenever Grinzo enters the battlefield uh, with X plus one counters on it, you know, if we pay it, tap, pay, uh, tap out for X, and then for two mana activation, put the bottom card of your library into your graveyard. If it's a creature card or power less than or equal to Grinzo's power, put it onto the battlefield. I was going to get the cliffs. Ooh, there we go. Teferi's puzzle box. Wonderful. Exactly what we need. Uh, let's get down Grinzo. That's going to be black and a red. Um, helps if we tap out for red on that one. There we go. Black and red, X is going to be zero. I have this deck set up to where X is pretty much always going to be zero. Really nice. You can slam Grinzo down on turn two, and then if you don't have a turn three play, you can start going for some uh, some blind fire Grinzos and see what you can kind of get into. Our play gets Tesa, Envoy of Ghosts, Vig uh, Vigilance Protection from Creatures. Uh, whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, destroy that creature. Create a 1-1 one -one white and black spirit creature token with flying. Um, let's go ahead and get down the Blood Crypt. Nothing for turn three. Yeah. Not going to pay two on that one, and then we're going to go and pass the turn. Let's get old Grinzo pop back up, get his dungeon key ready to go so we can start unlocking some of these dungeon cells. Now, if you've been a long-time subscriber of the channel, you may have noticed that Grinzo used to be a uh, staple on my channel a long time ago, but um, I, it was Grinzo Goblins, and I enjoyed playing Grinzo Goblins, but um, I came to realize I wanted something that was a little bit more substantial, than uh, had a little bit more flavor than just Goblins. Uh, let's go and go step up for Grinzo again. That's going to be red-black, and then X is going to be... Uh, X is zero. There we go. Get down Grinzo. And then we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Okay, sorry about that. I had a little bit of a cough. All right, opponent's going to go for Profane Command. Target player loses X life and target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn. That's fine. Grinzo has his key. We will not be held back. Cabal and the Church of Athreos will not hold Grinzo back from letting go of all the prisoners. Uh-uh. Not today. Let's go and get the mountain down. Um, do we want to go for... It's really not going to matter. If we go for Teferi's Puzzle Box, we can't get down Grinzo, but do we want to go for Teferi? Yeah, let's do that, because that's going to put us online for getting rid of some stuff. Oh, I tapped wrong. I meant to tap that mountain. We could have got down Viscerous Seer. That's a bummer. I always like getting down Viscerous Seer. Oh, well. Sorry about that. But anyway, so we've got Harold in the hand. We have New Scrap Mob. And then we also got Visitor Seer, so we can actually stack these on the bottom of our library in a manner that's going to allow us to start bringing some of these creatures back. And in fact, I'm going to get some, uh, see if I can't grab some pen and paper to kind of keep track of that. Because it, it is pretty easy to uh, to lose track of what you got on the bottom. But oh yeah, I didn't finish my story. But yeah, I used to do Grinzo Goblins, and uh, I really wanted to go with more of a, just kind of a, just a random assortment of creatures. Some of the most powerful creatures that you can get that have high converted mana costs, but their power is two or less you know you've got herald which is seven mana but it's going to be perfect to rip out with grinzo you got stuff like new scrap mob which is a zero zero it enters the battlefield with those five counters grinzo doesn't care about its power just doesn't care about those counters entering the battlefield it just cares about its power oh, oh was that mudsta yeah here hey one sec one sec buddy we're recording <laughs> all right so we're going to get the uh teferi's puzzle box we're going to put those on the bottom it's going to put the knight's whisper on the bottom let's go for mountain um, let's go for, either way, we're going to have to put these on the bottom, unfortunately, but let's go and go Visitor Seer. Let's go New Scrap Mob. We'll have Herald on the bottom. So it's going to be Herald and then New Scrap on top. Okay. And then My Claw Shaman. Uh, let's go and get the Mountain down, which is really good. Glad we got that. Do we want to tap out again for Grinzo? That's going to put us online for maybe double Gonti Mind Claw next turn. Yeah, I like that. Let's go for Grinzo. So one, two, three, four, five. And then tap out for one. There we go. You get on Grinzo, then we're going to go pass the turn. Pray that our opponent does not have another spot removal in the hand, and then we will uh, get Grinzo going. Actually, let's, uh, it'll be fun. We can all go say hi, hi, hello, uh-oh. We're going to say hi to, uh, I was hoping that would just pop up. Actually, can we do it this way? Excuse me, one sec. There we go. Let's see if we can pop the game up that way. It's kind of, oh, never mind. Grinzo can't, uh, not Grinzo, <laughs> Mudsta can't. I was hoping to, we could have uh, Mudsta's chat on the right side that way it'd be like he's sitting here with us watching this play but unfortunately we can't do that but i'll talk to him here in a second all right but gonna get down the angelic destiny um gets four 
plus four, plus four has flying and first strike, and whenever it dies, return it to its owner's hand. All right, swinging it for a six, seven. So we'll be online pretty good. Our opponent's sitting at one card in the hand. Um, we're going to be able to blind fire some stuff. Well, let's do this. Let's go for, put those on the bottom. Let's go for the minion reflector. Let's go for stomping slabs. And then either way, we're going to be able to tap out for all three of these creatures. So it doesn't really matter how we sequence it. So we'll go Abyssal Horror. We'll go the Mind Claw Shaman. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Yeah, we'll have just enough to do all three of those. All right, so they go down to the bottom. We will be able to make the land drop for the turn. Let's get the bad lands down. Actually, yeah, we'll go and get down the Bloodstained Mire. We're not going to crack it. Um, let's go ahead and go for the Grinzo. It's going to be one, two. Opponent's going to enter. Um, I think we have the Abysmal Horror on the. No, excuse me, Gaunti. So we're going to be able to exile the top card in their library. Oh, and let's go for that Deathbringer Liege or Faith Sweater into the battlefield. Yeah, actually, like, let's grab that Faith's Fetters. Um, and then let's go ahead, and that's going to put the Abysmal Horror down there. I, I kind of like taking care of the Cabal with that. Actually, I like that a lot better. Um, we could kind of go for Mind Claw Shaman, but with one card in the hand, I really like going for Faith Fetters. It's going to stop their Beat Stick creature from swinging in. As can't attack or block. We're going to gain four life. And then anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn. Now, we will have to put these cards on the bottom of our library. So before we go for that, we may end up going for a Bloodstained Mire Crack, just to kind of see, kind of shuffle up just a little bit. But at this point right now, we're kind of doing exactly what the deck wants to do. You know, we want to get down some uh, quick creatures for cheap. Now, had we not wanted to go for face fetters off Gonti, um, we would have been able to get down the Bizzle Horror. That would have made them discard some cards. And then that Mind Claw Shaman would have allowed us to uh, cast a spell out of their hand, which is always a lot of fun. And in fact, Mind Claw Shaman, that's pretty much the reason why I built Grinzo Goons like this, is because I had Mind Claw Shaman in my original Grinzo deck that was primarily Goblins. Uh, but there was one game where I played against Riku that I ripped Mind Claw Shaman off the bottom of our library off a of blind fire. And our Riku opponent had the, um, it's like eight or nine mana. And it's the, <laughs> let me get that crossed off. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, it was like eight or nine mana. It's that um, target player takes two extra turns. And uh, we ripped that off Mind Claw Shaman. That was enough for us to close the game out. And it felt really good. Loved it. All right, see so your opponent's going to be tapping out. Fellas. It's going to be six total mana. Now, we're also running stuff in here like Kaboom. So choose any number of target players. Um, exile all creatures. Okay. Exile Gonti, Cabal. Yeah, that's fine. And then we don't really need Kaboom. Um, we'll still have to, we don't really need to cast it, I guess, technically, until the converted mana cost. We might be able to hit something nice off of that. Um, let's go and crack the Bloodstained Mire, though. Let's go and shuffle it up just a little bit. And then um, <laughs> grab that Canyon Sloth, put it in the battlefield. This will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We'll have 8 mana to get down Grinzo. I, I love it when you have a 2 mana <laughs> commander, and it just gets just blasted into next Tuesday. All right, let's do this. So let's go ahead and put down the, let's go for the Swamp, Smoldering Marsh, Badlands, Kaboom. And we'll put that Epitaph uh, Golem onto the on the bottom. We're not going to be able to get it. That's the only one that is uh, technically, ooh, two cards in the hand with Mindclaw Shaman, just straight up casting it. Let's get the Command Tower down. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Grinzo will be eight total mana. That is correct. Um, I think I like going for Mindclaw Shaman, just to kind of see what they've got in there. More than likely, it's just some sort of removal spell. Is that exactly what we're going to go for? Yeah, let's do it this way. We're still going to be able to go for Mind Claw Shaman once we put it down on the bottom. So let's do that. It's going to be one, two, three. Herald would be nice to start gaining control of some of their lands. Um, X is zero. That's fine. Get down Grinzo. I'm trying to figure out if we want to go for Chrome Mox Exiling Herald. Are we able to do it next turn? Yeah, I kind of like getting that little bit of pressure on our opponent, especially if we have, since we do have Teferi's Puzzle Box on the battlefield, um, really kind of messing with their hand. Uh, if we can start gaining control of, um, it kind of puts them in only going for like some sort of um, you know, sorcery speed removal or ripping into it that turn. All right, we're going to have the Teferi's Puzzle Box. And then, uh, but you can see how good Teferi's Puzzle Box is in this deck. And in fact, I meant to, you know, I hate that I have a white border version of it. I meant to go pick up a um, the Mirage version, which looks absolutely beautiful. Looks wonderful. Um, <laughs> Angel of Despair enters the battlefield, destroy target permanent. See if it's going to be Puzzle Box or no, it's Grinzo. All right. <laughs> I love it. All right. So now we're at the point to now where we don't really have to go for Grinzo. We can simply just uh, start hard casting some of our threats. City of Brass deals one damage, puts them down to 26. It is just battle. Battle to keep Grinzo off the battlefield. Okay, Teferi's Puzzle Box going to go down to the bottom. Let's put that Chrome Mox down. It's going to be Minion Reflector. Let's go for the uh, Visitor Seer. Let's go for Herald, and we'll go for Mind Claw Shaman. Knight's Whisperer, Magma Jet. 
and then draw two cards. Um, there's no permanence on the battlefield at this point right now. Let's go ahead and get down the Frexian Tower. Let's do that. So Grinzo's going to cost 10 mana. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's going to be 9 total mana. Um, so we're online for Magma Jet and Thief of Blood. But we're not going to be able to take care of Angel of Despair. But either way, we're going to do Let's go ahead and go for Knight's Whisper. Yeah, I'm okay with that. If they want to swing it for 5, uh, to ready. And then we can actually sacrifice a puzzle box to blow up the angel. And we can actually just start hard casting this stuff. Yeah, I kind of like that. Um, let's go for that. That's going to be one. Ready, that was a really good draw. Let's go for the minus one ability. Sacrifice an artifact. We're going to choose the Angel of Despair. And we'll sacrifice to Fairy's Puzzle Box. Take care of that. We have Magma Jet online that we can go for. Yeah, anything else we're going to pass the turn. So we can get the Scry going with Magma Jet. We can get that down. We'll be able to completely tap out again for Grinzo. And then we can slowly start going for the uh, plus one on Doretti to start getting some more artifacts on the battlefield. We did finally break free from that puzzle box. So uh, we're, we're not kind of messing with our opponent's hand at this point right now. So we're going to get down the planes, and then it's going to be Tesa, then draw a card. So Vigilance, and then whenever a, a creature deals combat damage, you destroy that creature, could do 1-1 White Spirit token. Okay. Do we want to go for Magma Jet? That's something we want to go for. Yeah, let's see if we can't get an artifact or something. Let, let's go Magma Jet. Send 3 damage up top. Oh, there we go. Wonderful. Uh, let's go ahead and put the Monolith on the bottom. We'll put that Talisman of Indulgence on top of our library. If they're going to start going for Grinzo, I certainly do not mind going for their commander, kind of sending it back to the command zone. I'm just going to get the Swamp down. Let's go and go for Talisman of Indulgence. That's going to be... Let's do it the other way. Let's go for that. Get that down. Let's go for the minus one ability. Off to ready to take care of Tesa. There we go. Let's go and sacrifice, um, yes, yeah, sacrifice the talisman. Oh, dang it, we should have added mana in response to that. Sorry about that. And then let's go ahead and go for the Abyssal Horror. Yeah, that's going to be good. And tap out for one more. We're going to tap out for the mountain. Okay, there we go. Enters the battlefield, target player discards two cards. Not going to be us. We're going to make them discard some cards. Um, they do have Erebos to start ripping through some stuff, but if, you know, if they get enough Erebos triggers, it can be a, uh, an alternative way for us to kind of slowly start closing the game out. I love, like, when you sit down to play Grinzo, you're going to go for those activations, and this game is just turned into this weird Tef Teferi's puzzle box. <laughs> I don't know. I love it. Anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn. So now we have a six mana 2-2 two -two flyer. We can start swinging in. Hopefully, we can plus up on Doretti again. Uh, we'll have a little bit of time that we can at least kind of chump block. We're not necessarily trying to go for combat damage. We're just going to get some pretty nasty creatures on the battlefield. So we'll finally go for Grinzo again, and then start going from there. So your opponent's going to be tapping out for him. It's going to be, uh, looks like, Five total mana at this point. Three dreams. Search your library for three aura cards with different names revealed. Then put them in your hand. Then shuffle your library. Okay. We'll see if they search up on that one. Okay. And our opponent did search up. Let's see what they search up. There's going to be some curses. Okay. So we have curse of misfortunes. We have curse of death's hold. Creatures get minus one, minus one. And then curse of thirst. Deals damage equal to the number. All right. So we, we've got a little bit of a clock going. Let's go and get the, rid of that curse of thirst. <laughs> So if we can get down, actually, we need to get Grinzo down for three, because that minus one, minus one is really not going to help our game plan. But, if, yeah, because I think technically it will, um, oh, and the Curse of Thirst deals damage. Yeah, so they're going to be able to redirect over to that. Okay, let's get down the Cavern of Souls, naming Gerblin. Gerblin. There we go. If you're ever, I've had different people ask about Gerblin. Gerblin is from uh, the Ad Adventure Zone podcast. Highly suggested. Really good. Um, let's go ahead and swing in for two. I like that. We'll get down Grinzo and then just start rocking and rolling from there. Let's go ahead and push in. Attack with all of our creatures. That'll be a 2 2. Okay, so I accidentally muted the mic to cough during the video, and I forgot to turn it back on. Um, so I've got this part sped up, but basically what ends up happening is we try to tap out for Grinzo. I decide to end up sacrificing the creature on the battlefield to add some extra mana off the Frixian Arena Tower. Not Frixian Arena, but the Frixian Tower to get that extra mana down. And then our opponent, this turn, ends up tapping out for a uh, Day of Judgment, blowing up all the creatures, which you're going to see in here in just a second. They get the curse down, then they go for that Day of Judgment and blow everything up. And then the next turn, we um, try and go for completely tapping out for Grinzo, and actually Actually, we're about to start with the live commentary now. Okay, sorry about that. This has been a long game, and I paused the mic to cough real quick, so I do apologize about it. I don't know how long the, the mic was muted, but I'll speed it up. Oh, no, and our post our opponent got down the uh, overwhelming splendor, and then the curse of death's hold. Oh, this is just absolutely brutal. Okay, opponent's going to get down Frexian Arena. 
Swinging in for a 5-7. I think that's going to get it on that one. We got overwhelming splendor out on this one. Yeah, our opponent just had tons of removal. And that's going to be one, two, three. It's going to be three curses. There we go. Puts us down to zero. Opponent's going to get it on this one. So, anyway, yeah, I do apologize. I muted the mic for a second to cough. So, I'll just fill that commentary in. Or maybe you didn't even notice. And I don't need to be saying this. But, yes, I'm excited to start recording more with Grinzo. If we can get Grinzo onto the battlefield. But you can kind of get a, an idea of what we're trying to go for with stuff like Thief of the Blood, the Horror. And then, um, you know, Dreddy's nice just to have in there. I like Dreddy. It's been a really good Planeswalker for me, especially at three mana. But, anyway, excited to record more with Grinzo. And if you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.